the finished line phase. This is where we capitalize on all the work we've done so far. We take the rough construction, the thumbnail, the idea, and we create our finished lines, right? Our final set of lines that we can take forward and add color to. So let's look at what we can do to prepare for this stage and just to make sure we've got our mind right when we come to creating the polished final lines. So for me, this is a tricky one, right? Because I really just view the line phase as another drawing, right? I, I don't come from a Western comic background. I don't sort of have this sort of separation in my mind between like penciling and inking or anything. It's just another sort of set of lines. And I've always done this digitally. So, you know, a big part that this sort of process plays and the process of inking plays um, traditionally is we sort of do the construction phase in pencil. Um, I don't do that, right? I'm assuming you're probably not doing that either. I don't think a lot of people do that these days when they're sort of learning because digital's here and drawing tablets are, are pretty good. Uh, Cintiqs and drawing displays and, and those sort of things are very good. Now, if you have a Cintiq display um, or another sort of drawing tablet display, then that will help you get sort of nice polished lines. Um, but it's important to understand that you know, I really don't think a lot of people care too much about that. Um, you know, if, if I sort of, you know, were to look at sort of the, the polished lines here, you know, I feel like they're, they're pretty sort of, you know, clean and sort of whatever. But, you know, the, here's ones that are done almost 10 years sort of earlier. Um, and there's a lot to be said for these, but these were drawn just with a sort of standard Wacom uh, Intuos tablet and not one of the newer ones, right? The pressure sensitivity wasn't great. And it was sort of hard to get anything resembling like a finish line that you could get with a brush or a pen traditionally. But I think in the reality, um, and maybe this is just part of what I've sort of built up with my style in general, where I try and just focus on the image and the story overall and less on sort of the line quality. That's how I view it at least. Um, is I, I think that's what people care about, you know, and you could sort of say, you know, if we sort of look at, you know, this, it's like, well, yeah, you know, the line's kind of messy and I've sort of hacked it up here and there. Um, but there is a lot of energy to, to that. And, um, you know, it doesn't look that bad. And also, similar to traditional lines, if you do them quite high res, right, these ones are sort of 7,000 pixels high. And again, if I'm sort of doing illustrations, again, part of what I'm recommending is you, you basically make your finish lines as big as you can. Um, is it sort of means that when you do res that down eventually, a lot of those little sketchy marks and stuff kind of disappear. And that's exactly the same process people used before. Uh, and they've used for, for ages, basically, to, to create, you know, a big illustration or a big painting. And then you basically print it quite small, you know, so a lot of comic book pages and things were drawn quite large, you know, um, you know, like very, very, very large. And they were just sort of res down and, um, you know, then sort of colored and, and, and that sort of thing. But um, this has been used for a long time as people aren't often actually as good as they, they look. Uh, you know, it's a process of reproducing down and a lot of those little errors sort of disappear. A lot of little sketchy marks and things kind of disappear when you res it down. So just keep that in mind, right? You are looking at it like this and you're saying, ah, oh, you know, this is a bit sketchy. Um, just know, again, I don't think most people care about that too much. They care about, you know, the other stuff, right? Like is, is the structure right? You know, is the story right? Is it interesting? You know, is there a good one, two, three, don't, three read on the image? What's happening? I think that's what most people care about. Um, but yeah, if you're looking at it and you're saying, oh, my lines look kind of messy, you, you have to like imagine that a lot of the lines you're appreciating from other people are sort of at the size that they're wanting you to look at it. And if you actually looked at, I think if you actually look at the finished quality of a lot of people's lines, traditionally and digitally, if you actually look at the PSD, they're not as high fidelity and that there are little mistakes in there as well. So um, again, just a few things to keep in mind. Um, so the, the real the real things to, to look at here that I think are, are very useful uh, that, you know, obviously we sort of, you know, these are all sort of the finished lines, but, you know, what we're doing is, is kind of, you know, taking this, uh, where have we got this? Yeah. Uh, got some of these things in there. 
Yeah, right. So that's sort of what we're looking at, right? And there's a couple of things that I think are really important to take forward. One is just make sure you're having a plan for what layers you're going to put where. As I've explained as part of this process, I think creating different things on separate layers is one of the best ways you can get really good selections very easily uh, using the technique that I sort of show you. And, uh, you know, at least just make sure, you know, just put stuff on, you know, foreground, middle ground, background, right? If it's sort of simpler and you can make it, you know, I, I feel like often I'm when I'm doing these demos, I'm kind of putting in like more line, more layers than you maybe need. But that's just to show that once you kind of get into the flow of that and just kind of, you know, you overcome the technical, technical sort of side of it. It is. It, it doesn't really add any effort or time. You know what I mean? It doesn't does make the final file a bit complicated, but yeah, really, um, that that's a very easy way to create a complex image, which I think can be a big part of making a highly polished professional illustration. Right, um, just having all those things on separate layers and it makes that color adjustment um, very easy. So make sure you've got a plan for what layers are going to go on where. And um, the other thing is when we sort of ink, um, it's always good to, sorry, ink or create finished lines. It's always good to kind of start with foreground things first, right? Because, you know, if we draw the thing in the foreground, then we kind of know how the thing in the background sort of needs to go to interact with it. There's two ways you could do this. One is like I have, right? If you sort of look at the, the finish lines, I've kind of just drawn through, right? Stuff that's behind other stuff that I know is going to be on separate layers. I just draw it through and I pretend it's not there, right? That's totally fine and it can be a really easy way to firstly, A, make sure that when you're doing those selections, you've got closed objects behind other objects and you don't have holes in things. And it's also just a really easy way to make sure that you're sort of following through with the line, right? But some people do like the feeling of like, uh, you know, it's all one, um, you know, it's all one sort of flat image, you know, and I think that is a good look. And by that, I mean just that, you know, you would sort of respect the fact that there's things in front of other things and you might sort of, you know, um, you know, not, you, you, you might sort of stop the lines, you know, before they sort of cross over other lines and stuff like that, you know. Um, again, I think it's it's just depends what sort of style you want, right? Um, but yeah, start with foreground and something I think is so important that um, can just be a small change that I think can make a huge difference is again, I view this as just another drawing. But I think it's really important to have the ratio of the finished lines to the sketchy lines um, to really bias the new lines that you're putting in, right? So what I want is, is I really want to be able to sort of notice, right? When I put a line down that I, and I'm inking it, it, that sort of becomes very quickly the dominant line, right? And, and I think it's good to basically, you know, fade out and make sure that those rough lines are sort of just as faint as they need to be so that you can see them, um, you know, that you really, really fade them back. I think that helps a lot with the mentality that this is just another drawing and the lines you're putting down now are the important ones. Um, other people have a slightly different process, but I think um, if they if they sort of leave the, right, if they leave these ones to be quite dark, um, I don't really know how that works because I, I always end up just not putting enough emphasis on the uh, finish lines because I'm kind of in my mind sort of saying, well, that's all that I need to do because I've got this other line behind there and I can't really visualize, you know, what it looks like without it because it's there, you know, it's in my, it's in my face. So again, I recommend, you know, fading them out till you almost can't see it and then really treating it as like I'm creating a finished drawing again based off that. And that way I can see the drawing I'm creating. And that way it's very unlikely that I'll turn these off and then be like, whoa, what did, what did I get there? Um, you know, I sort of totally missed, missed this or missed that, right? So this allows me to really be like, I'm creating finished lines. I can still see them, but only just. So I, 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 do, I do recommend that. I think that when people, um, you know, do it the other way where they've still got a lot of this stuff visible, I think often what happens is kind of halfway through, once they've got the basics here, um, they, they sort of get rid of, uh, they get rid of these and then they do another pass, right? Again, that may sort of work for you, but I think that's a bit more of a traditional legacy way of doing it, where you are thinking about sort of putting in rough sort of pencils and then sort of, you know, getting the, the rough outlines and then you kind of erase the pencil and then you sort of put in your texture and your secondary sort of um, 
uh, little bits and pieces, right? You sort of finish off the drawing, add the blacks, add the darks. Um, yeah, I think it's really good to think of this as just another drawing. It's just another phase. It's just one where you get to really focus on the polish, the texture, and the subtlety. Um, so yeah, I don't think this matters whether or not you've got really polished lines or um, really you know rough lines. Okay, that just depends on style, right? And I think to a certain degree, it's possible to hide behind sketchiness um, with a finish. Um, I don't think it's possible to hide behind sketchiness at the construction phase, right? I, I think that's often where people get a mix, bit mixed up. And that's often why, you know, you see people where it's like, why is someone else's sketchy thing good? And why is my sketchy thing not good? That's the, often the problem I had. And it wasn't my finished lines being sketchy that were the problem. It was my construction drawing being sketchy and, and weak that was the problem, right? And that's often the difference. If there's a solid underpinning, you can kind of do whatever you want with this phase. And the reality is you will just get better at it over time, right? If you're looking at, again, any of these sort of, you know, really, really polished, professional, amazing artists who are so good at lines, you know, by the time you notice them, they've probably been working in comics or something or the entertainment industry for like 10 plus years. You know, they've just been doing this all day. That's why they're so good at it. If you do the same thing, you'll get good at it too. It just is a matter of practice. So anyway, uh, this is just another drawing to me. Um, let me know if you've got any sort of suggestions or, or other things you'd like me to sort of clarify on that. But yeah, apart from just uh, layers and making sure that you don't let the underdrawing overpower your sort of your drawing of the final lines, I think it's just a matter of doing another drawing. Good luck with it.